Hi, David Odell here with Odell Complete Concrete. This is our first day on this particular job site. However, this is really my fifth time on at this particular house. I've already did the foundation addition, the front patio, patio out, outside of the addition, and now we're doing addition to the patio. So it just it's a continuous process. right here we're just adding this is about a 12 by 15 plus a little walkway going around the side we just laid out we, we put a string line then we painted the grass with orange paint and then we cut it there so when I go to rip it out of the tractor I get a nice clean cut on the lawn here's a tree we were just removing here in the corner came out really easy I just pushed wiggled it back and forth came out like a bad tooth the side yard gate is about 36 inches wide so that three foot tractor got back there real nicely I'm gonna save a little bit of this lawn that I'm peeling up so I noticed that there was a dead area in the backyard and I'm going to transplant it over there to see if maybe it'll take. There's the outline of the whole addition. Now we're pulling a string line down the existing concrete just to make sure that we're straight with that. We measured off the house also, but visually you'll probably want to go straight with the um, existing concrete rather than parallel with the house if there was any discrepancy. So there is an existing uh, concrete curb along the foundation of the house and that was put on there years ago and it's dowled into the foundation. That was just to uh, reinforce this end of the house. So we're not going to remove that. But I noticed that it was put in level so we, we're going to follow that flush with the new concrete. We're going to also valley it away from the house and bring it over to the lawn area. They have a pressure treated 2x6 separating the lawn from the side yard which is some decomposed granite or gravel or something like that. So we'll utilize that as a form. Also we're going to be putting some rebar dowels in to the existing patio that I did about a year ago. And then we're going to also dowel that curb along the house. 
we're just going to drill some 3 8 holes and then drive some 3 8 rebar in there so it's going to be a dry tight fit have the cordless DeWalt roto hammer a real powerhouse The rebar will be laying at two foot centers, both directions. All those short pieces that are getting cut off right now, those will actually turn into the dowels and we can pound them in. A lot of times when I tie rebar, what I'll do is I'll tie the, the perimeter 100% and then inside the field, in the middle area, I'll go every other bar with a tie. Here we have Luigi's Concrete arriving on the job site. Just added the fiber mesh. Martin's Concrete Pump is going to blow this in here. And this particular mix here is a 4500 PSI. And we're putting it in there pretty stiff. It's going in at about a four and a half inch slump. We have the four foot wide bowl float magnesium with a rocker arm on it. 
as I run the bowl float over, I can kind of see, because it, it spans four feet, I can kind of see where the bowl float's touching or where it may need a little concrete. As you run it, you look for that and you sprinkle back where needed. Or you can drag a little excess if you find a high point. You can kind of tilt your float down and drag a little back to a lot of options. Now what we have here is the walking edge or this one's 10 inches wide with a half inch radius. So we have an existing joint pattern, joint pattern off of the um, existing patio. So we're just going to follow, follow them through. And it's actually the same width as the uh, French doors. So so far, I just kind of cut it with the deep cutter two and a half inch three foot long that gets the joints nice and straight it breaks the aggregate deep and then I'll follow it up with a three quarter deep half inch walking joiner big blue is just kind of flattening it out knocking out some edger lines joiner lines sealing it up because this is going off pretty quickly because we have the high PSI in here at a low slump not a lot of downtime when you put them in like this. Now we're running the funny trowel, knocking out all the joint lines, edger lines. another pass with all the um, walking tools found a little grass right there we just plucked out or some some kind of foreign object tried to float up This looks like it'll be about the last hit, and then it should be ready to broom. Hopefully, um, the goal is to try to get it all with walking tools, not have to drop down and get on your hands and knees and rub it out. You just want to use all your walkers if possible. If you time everything right and you're good with them, you can pull it off. Until, unless you get in a big area, then you're going to have to get out there. Another foreign object in the concrete. And here's the 50% nylon, 50% horsehair broom working the magic. Basically what it does, it makes the uh, surface all uniform and then you get a non-slip finish as well. Every couple of stroke strokes, I'm uh, rinsing the wheel, uh, the broom in the wheelbarrow, not shaking out all the water, so it's pretty dry. But I'm just getting rid of all the cement residue off of the uh, broom here.
this is your final product a real work of art all the joints line up with the existing perfectly straight all that's left to do here is come back the next day remove the forms backfill and do a little cleanup Here's your final product after we're stripped, backfilled a couple days later. We don't have a lot of slope on here, but it's enough to get the water moving in the right direction. Anyway, thank you for watching and have a great day.